Okay, so a couple things have changed. OBS got updated, and I've been messing with that, so I wanted to get back into recording. That was, It's been somewhat inexcusable how long it's been between games and things, but I've been playing the catch-up game with YouTube for quite a bit now, and I've got some other videos processing and stuff. Anyway, you guys don't worry, don't worry about that. It's not none of your concern, really. It's just what's happening in my life. <laughs> All right, so um, let me see here. I don't know if this has ever happened before where you guys will play a game and then you come back to it. And it's only been like a couple of weeks, but you really swear you don't remember where you left off on. So let's jump in here. I don't even remember the voices I was doing for anyone. I don't remember any of that stuff at all. So let's see where this goes here. Oh man, I'm only on day two. Okay, uh, were they remember? Okay, you awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Or premonitions. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but... I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. Like him. Like, like, like? So I think we've been through this one, but I'm just going to go ahead and go through this again. Because this sounds really familiar to me. I know, it sounds like I'm moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him, like him, like him. We got to talking after class. He's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. So this, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go past this. Popular, I'm thinking maybe something got lost in peer pressure cooker language translation there. Uh, yes, I do distinctly remember having this conversation. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of the one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient. Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him, and I brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I, I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever, however, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about n new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Cough, fever, cough. Please, 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 it would mean the world to me. No one has nothing to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Ah, oh, no, I can't do that. Not gonna do it. Make a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of Newt. I know that sounds like some sort of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's eh, probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh my god, yeah. I remember the whole thing about the horse. Colonel Sanders is arriving at the school. Uh, I'm going to stand back and admire his majestic glory this time. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. I, I, it's probably one of those horses, I believe from the Middle East, the ones that look like liquid metal. I, if you haven't seen those, just look them up. They're amazing. <laughs> Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish 
He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Marion attempts to cover for you. Oh, Mario just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. So, I'm going to pause for just a second. This is probably something a lot of you that are watching this, if you're into anime, like. There is something timeless about the classrooms, the weather, the overall art direction that happens in so many of these sort of productions that are anime inspired, influenced, or, you know, the real, the real, real deal. And it is unnerving as an artist, especially when I look at like, so let's, let's do what these series were originally intended to do, which is look at the art direction that's involved here. The overall interface design is nice and reserved, even being bright pink, which is not the color I would have thought of for KFC, but the illustrations they're doing here, the digital ones are phenomenal. They look like they could be digital watercolor or real watercolor. And they always have this good weather. Like it's like carried over into this whole aspect of just being super hyper satisfactory. If that's a thing, I, I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I've noticed that even in Comey can't communicate. So the whole and, and the whole school trope is a big thing in anime. But it, it's just interesting to me how it carries on over and over and over again. And you don't really get that same sort of I don't want to say attention to detail, but that same sort of aesthetic treatment, even whenever you represent schools in America, they tend to be a bit more run down, a bit more rusty or more colorful or more disorderly. It's just an odd thing. And I know it's a cultural thing, but it's just interesting to me. All right. So we went through all of this here, counterfeiting it. Yeah, they show up. You see here. Oh, yeah. Van Van's like, well, there, little one, I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why did you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? And uh, tell him to stop acting immature. I just realized he has no shirt on. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork. Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice they haven't just been studying the book. They've got pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Horror playing. <laughs> oh God, that was a terrible laugh. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. No, no. Plank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it. You bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp <laughs> womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> I think I'm, just, I'm gonna let it make the noises. <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. 
protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either one of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely, he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Mario? Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh, I don't remember what I picked last time. I don't want to do the shim yeah, shimmering pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. Oh, man, that's what happened last time. Oh, my God. Okay. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I remember the ghost. Yeah. Here, give me an important message. Oh, you must avenge my death. Fulfill your destiny. All you must do must is... <coughs> I was saying, fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. It's fine, I'll work through. <laughs> to fulfill <laughs> the prophecy, <laughs> you must. You feel yourself beginning to regain consciousness. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth. And, oh, <laughs> I'm now doing sprinkles. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. And before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rival's honored to make a dramatic announcement. Okay, so this is where I was this last time. Today's lunch will be prepared. Via timed competitive cook-off. <sighs> the level of theatrics with these two is off the charts, so I'm going to demand they stop wasting everyone's time. Is everything a competition with you two? Mm. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn to love. To learn to love? Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your, gen your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters <laughs> to capture or something? <laughs> okay, that's a nice kind of Digimon Pokemon hit there. I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. <sighs> How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Mario, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with, oh my god, it's so tiny. With chocolate milk to wash it down and a tart one for dessert. Look at this illustration. Look at this. The hand? Fine. That's fine. I, I think this is the reason why I'm so addicted to the anime Food Wars. It's when I see stuff like this, the, the, uh, the overall draftsmanship and the attention to detail on this is just phenomenal. I can't draw food to save my life. I'm terrible at it. Especially in Black and White King. I'm just not very good at it. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. 
Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunch room, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. And you breathe a sigh of relief. At least not... At least not until we turn on the timer. Then a huge red light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My bestie can best the best of them. Best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made his mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Mm. That's wrong. Oh, of course it is. What are you thinking, Mario? Get your head in the game. You're going to need se to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? Eleven. That's right. You, <laughs> I'm fucking making up different voices. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Vigilance. That's wrong. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. I never really... It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? A uh, small town where dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Aroo! You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? It is sizzling. That's wrong. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Is this the end? Yep. Game over. My God, I got annihilated on that. <sighs> Let's see how this goes. So if I try again from here, where am I going to end up at? Do, 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 do. All right. Cafeteria lights dim. Oh, God. I got to like, Can I go forward? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I got mm. further. Click, 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 click. So, this is definitely one problem I have with the game on that. What does this do? Oh, no. I don't want to do that. I want to resume. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Got that. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's go back to the... Uh, I wish I could start right at the battle. Which is close, but... Uh, all right, let me see if I remember this. Because I think I picked Celsius. It should have been Fahrenheit. My short-term memory is so terrible. All right, 100 degrees. Oh, my Oh my God, it was Celsius. Ugh. Get my head in the game. There's 11 herbs and spices. All right, you want to trust? That's wrong. Oh my god, I'm already messed up here. All right, Let's see here. Small town. John Cougar Melon Camp. Silence. That's right. When you taste your cooking, you'll be so taken with it that you'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Mario. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now you can think about as Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill a traditional Victorian bathing tub? What were you thinking to get your mind back in the competition? I'm trying. You're stranded on desert island with only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? Oh my god, you know what? You shouldn't even be focused on the challenge you're failing behind. Uh... Oh god. Oh god. Oh my god, I'm not even selecting shit. Everything's going completely wrong here. You're really struggling to keep up. The next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. The makeup time you toss your biscuit donut to the stand mixer as you do, the crowd gasps. Yikes. 
client's not happy. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands with Mario does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know that it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't have to get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand in the mixer to, re oh, to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Oh my god. But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quiet, quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. Oh, this is Sprinkles. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I, I, I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Ah, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Suddenly, surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Mario's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Mario to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this cream of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelée. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Mm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. Internalize. I'm going to internalize. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. <laughs> and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. This is <laughs> so weird. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. Can, can't you just leave me alone? I'm, I'm a loser. I'm, I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll, I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you. but for, This sounds like something Keanu Reeves would say. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you. But for all of us, do you ever think you've never failed in anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Fuck, <laughs> that's so stupid. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. Obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I, I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume I've Got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. 
I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite in the side of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. Because it's the spork monster. Gorgo the spork monster is here to fry a hero! Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Goku, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Borko, my twin, and I, Gorko, am here to avenge them. Are, are you, you stronger than Bork? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He is already on the same page as you. It's just... I, I, we beat Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you have much of a chance. Not to mention, I really feel guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would. I think what Mario is saying is, can't we just be friends? Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose we really don't need to fight. It, it's just, I've, I've got these party teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty foods. Surely you like to eat. Don't we all? Of course I do! Inspiration strikes, and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this! You toss a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth, and he devours it in one gulp. Delicious! Oh, you're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today! I... I don't believe it! You were human once? Well, 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 no, I, I was a chihuahua, but I was still a student at this school until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely! Borco used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you could find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through the sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear, I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life, Mario. Together I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Whoa, there's a chicken. Oh, yeah, cool. Stepping inside Sander's home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, I don't know. there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish he might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both perhaps? Now you've got them right where you want them. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? You decide that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in headfirst. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? 
I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. S sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items you can look at closer. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Ooh, they're sparkly. I'm gonna tap this chicken. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken that's sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, the true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Well, it's out here with the water. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and, main, and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out to the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I, I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of a student is swept out with a breeze. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Man, that's some heavy mental health bullshit right there. Oh my god, that gives me a really great idea. Like, maybe, like, whenever I have failures, I can just write them down, light them on fire, put the ashes in an urn, and then fire the urn out of a cannon. Oh, poetic. Mm, poor guy. Alright. Oh, one of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheering, cheersing them. Ah. Okay. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Ooh, tap on the item to discover more about the colonel. Mm, there's a door open now. What's going on here? The photo appears to be the Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Okay, I just noticed there's stuff here on the table. Whoa. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. This is getting wild. Oh, he has a scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power, <laughs> Power tool. Freshly starched collar. Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... I'm not joking. I bet there is a scented candle out there somewhere on Etsy that is power tool. <laughs> An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That's hilarious. That or maybe it's the drumstick he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would take who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? Uh I only got two things left. Must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 111111, 11, 11, the space the safe opens. Inside it you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. Alright, uh, last one. Whoa. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. Oh my god, this is super creepy. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in it. Oh my god, this, I am like... This is a stalker, is what this is. Like I, They say that home is where the heart is. <laughs> is this what they meant? This reminds me of a guy I knew in college. And I'm sorry, there's some serious red flags. I remember he used to take photos in... He had a friend that was a girl that, like, she was married, and he would, like, pose with, 
with her husband's jackets on. And I was like, wow, man, that's that's a good way to uh, end your college career in more ways than one. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish he's been working on. He wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks why you're wearing his jacket. Oh. <laughs> I usually don't loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh, crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. Ah, uh, you decide that now is your moment to make a big move, you tell me you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. Nope, I'm making a big move. Fess up and tell the truth. You confess. I, I think I'm developing feelings for you. Oh my god, the Colonel Santa. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause, and you stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Mario? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I just shat the hell out of that. <laughs> I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. Great. <laughs> kind of ass. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is this? Ah, my God. Everything about this is like 1970s romper room. You wait to the beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about in some jurisdictions isn't even legal but if the recipe is a secret how will they know your thoughts are interrupted when colonel sanders emerges into the room he's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it here's a simple breakfast i just whipped up it's meticulous you taste colonel sanders food and it takes you on a journey when you return he's waiting to ask you an important question so would you say that we're the perfect match. How how presumptuous. My cuisine in your taste buds, that is. <laughs> ah, such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Take him down a peg? <laughs> I'm gonna flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. <laughs> and with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. This guy is literally like, like just a few degrees short of, hey girl, that kind of energy. Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something supr very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night! I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's it's okay. I was just... But now that turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but uh, you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I... I, I think I can believe that. Since you've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Since I'd been. Of course, I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did... Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And uh, I, I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection was... Wowzers. Marion tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. 
When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Great. You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not grasp, grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's this whirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, uh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. If I am my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles on the dog and a treat. Uh. <sighs> you can get your swirly dip too. Why did you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school? Is that a horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school? But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ooh. You've got some nerve, Mario, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. N now you're twisting my words, and I, I won't have that. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well uh, just give it up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Mario, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Mario. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Mario. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just its just something I found lying around. I, it would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I, I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who, who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? Well, I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe like tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. <sighs> nope. Not gonna cast that spell. You take your friend's advice, and you put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. <laughs> Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you not to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder... Is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Strinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. 
I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Mario, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Do you think I want her to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you have to show off your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. <laughs> oh my god. Clank begins to shudder, steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where this came from. In terms of a deep friend uh, footwear, I guess it looks okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition, showdown, challenge, exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay? Uh, so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm, I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, s sort of. But I, I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I, I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay. Because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. <sighs> this is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his ev eviler counterpart, Ashla. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Mario's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you. And you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders and a lot of cherry blossom petals in the air. Mario, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? It's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You're usually happy to share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you the cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. What up, Fessa? 
Okay. Okay, you got me. I I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's that's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping help of TLC. But it'll probably start burning in a second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth! Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that, you'll put, that will push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. I don't know why it's <laughs> fucking weird. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, bastard, baster, <laughs> buster. <laughs> Van Van flexes his packs as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pasty pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Oh, he spoke five dial pressure point cooking check in cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? The singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Stop this shot. Van Van quickly unplugs the plank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Wink. I believe in you, Mario. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Mario, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up, and where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watering noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. This is I, Steve the Sparkmaster. Steve, wait, what happened to you, Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spark monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. Your crazy kids at your culinary schools really impressed me. Uh, mind if I hang out? Uh, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you, do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices you've got the Grimmore stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Uh, <laughs> you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in the pot of salted water? 
I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel spork monster winding up to tell you a very long and involved story. You don't exactly know where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you could just watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand it's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class. And when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Give up and drop out of culinary school. Never use some extra power from deep within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange. It's culinary energy. Oh, this is some food war shit here. As your culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Mario, you're the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoned immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be saved. But don't worry, dear Mario. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combina- Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are, are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the, per the perfect food union? Time's up, students! With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do, to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. I'm totally fucking up everything right now. <laughs> it looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how as he didn't cook anything. I can't, I can't feel my legs, may I be excused? Sure. Your kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where, where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. Uh, we'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes. It has been a long semester. Three days long. Wow, three whole days long. <laughs> um, but after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. Oh my god, the tininess of this. My word. It's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki I spy floating in this itsy bitty bowl? Yes, chef. 
Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Mario, for helping me believe in myself. Ban Ban, you're up. Now describe your dish. I, uh, I made uni over a smooth egg custard and an axion urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Oof! Oof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Arrgh. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't believe this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Whoa. Disqualified. For a glamour. Don't discount the melody. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next, student Ashley. It's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange balsam, Turkish delight, in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd like to ask you to please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a, at a cooking school? <sighs> Got toast in your ears or something, Mario? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yes. Yeah, which is why I cooked it, and I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Brat. I suppose you could smell it, or if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If, if the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley as she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine enough. You wouldn't know high and uh, let me say that a little. You would know high end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become... has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I think I've seen everything in this kitchen, you'll give me this... this thing and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You'll pass, you'll pass, and you'll pass, and you'll get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. 
you win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fra fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be any better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Easy <laughs> dog is in the house! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Wow, they oh, they changed their outfits. How cool. Bam Bam and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. <laughs> For a moment, you actually believed them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed a graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh... Amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's a spark monster. He isn't totally mild allowed. <laughs> Did the voice for him? Damn it. Everyone that's the uh, everyone that spark monster is no more. From here on out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. <laughs> I should have been doing that voice. Students try to finish what he had to say, but student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched upon his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wig on. To, we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of sand of such and such. <laughs> Must have sandwich. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. What do I do for Clank? Uh, now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have returned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I, I don't know what to say. Besides no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens, and Clank disappears through it. Man, the end of this is getting bizarre. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day of school, the first day you met him. Yes, come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and a man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. That is interesting. That, 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 that's an interesting way. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Mario, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, I I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes. Yes, I would love to. 
as you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders. The future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Mario. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best, best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at a pastry school. Oh, my dear Mario, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. That was weird and cool <laughs> at the same time. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> I have a feeling there was a lot more that could be done. Like some other answers that would have ended it earlier or whatever. So surreal. Oh my God. I figured this would be a two part. Thanks so much for watching guys. This was a lot of fun and really bizarre. Art direction was amazing. I do wish there'd been more animated aspects throughout the scenes. The descriptive stuff was great, but I think some really fun illustrations or partial animations like these that have really pushed him into a whole other direction. Wow. That was really cool. That was really, really cool. So I do kind of wonder here under the credits. Yeah, game by KFC W and K Andrew WK and PSYOP. Interesting. That is really interesting. I kind of hope, like I know this sounds crazy and I know that this is you know, very commercialized. It's put out by a corporation. But it was really well done. Who's the character designer? Brian Nguyen. Uh, another character designer, Steoban Keenan. I gotta look them up, see what's going on with that. Food illustration UI design, Stephanie Stromunger. I think I've already looked at this before in the last one now that I'm thinking about it. Because I wanted to know who had done that. Uh, Q&A, Super Text Mesh. Like, not, not too many people worked on this. I mean, what, about 20? Yeah. Wonderful. This is really funny. Really good. It's it's out of it's out of my normal wheelhouse, which I loved. And a, a good short game like this is so nice, considering like some of the other longer games I've gotten the in the planning stages and that I'm gonna try and work through. It's nice to do something like this. And it was a lot of talking and a lot of like voice acting. Not not my best voice acting, but still just a fun kind of you know effort to do. It was really cool. My cat's all up in my business here, ma'am. I don't, I don't think you guys can see her, but she's right here. Right, right here. <laughs> she's definitely making herself known on the microphone. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this was I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a KFC game, which is hilarious. Uh, let's see here, go back. So it definitely looks like, you know, are there other settings full screen prior to prior to see? Okay, so pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, I can imagine that there's probably some other elements in here where you could go some different ways, but I think they all end with a restart is my guess i would have really liked to have kind of played through it a few more times and done that but i think this is good enough it's a good fun playthrough and it's it's just a good bit of casual gaming i'm surprised actually this wasn't a mobile game that this was released free on steam but it, i'm glad they did this was a lot of fun to do this i think it would have lost something on the phone um the absurdity of it is really crazy but it does it does make me want to try more of those. And like I had talked about before, there was a game that I had played on the DS uh, before that, you know, I showed you guys a screenshot of that before, Sprung. And it reminded me a lot of that. I think most of these dating simulators are probably fairly similar. I hope that there are some that come out that are, you know, more along IPs I know, because I certainly want to try some other ones just to see what they're like. I think they could be absolutely hilarious. I really didn't know what any of these would be like aside from Sprung, which was... The game was released unfinished, and because of a quirk in the game, you can't actually finish that DS game, from what I understand. There are some people, I believe, that have gotten the ROM fixed, so if you download it and play it on an emulator, there is a version, I believe, that you can finish now, which I would someday like to look into myself. With that, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next playthrough. I'm still finishing up more 
playthrough time on some of the other ones. Uh, Steam World for sure. And I've got a couple of other games that are going to be much longer in length. There is one, the role-playing game based on the Steam World uh, universe that I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully the city-building game will be available shortly. And I've got some other ones that... You know, the hardest part about deciding what to do on these sort of things is I'm also, I, I know I've been saying this for a while, but it's really trying to make the decision to transition over onto Twitch as well, too, and start playing live on there. And I know that there's, like, I've talked to people about, like, you know, oh, are you a variety streamer? Are you this? And honestly, I'm not that concerned about it. I think at the end of the day, I just want to try and play games because they're fun. And this was, I needed this. I hadn't actually sat down to play a game in a while. And this was a hell of a lot of fun. So we are sitting at just under an hour and a half, about a, an hour and 15 minutes. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you in the next playthrough. See ya.